Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through all of bivariate data analysis in one video. We're going to shoot through it really quick. Well, maybe it won't be really quick, but we're going to try and make it quick. You can always put me on double speed if you need to. But we're going to go through this and we're going to cover all the material that you generally need for bivariate data analysis or correlation or scatter plots. There are going to be some new things in here, so you do want to make sure that you pay attention. But I'm going to do the whole thing because I know you're, you're familiar with this from your science classes, from previous math classes when you're in ninth or 10th grade, maybe even younger. Uh, you've seen this stuff before. But here's a nice consolidated approach to bivariate data analysis. What's up, y'all? I'm Tom. This is Like a Math Class. Let's get to it. So let's start this overview with what is bivariate data. Bivariate data simply means two variable data. That just means you're looking to see, is there a relationship between two different sets of data? Univariate data, one variable data, is when you're only analyzing one set of data. But here, on, you're going to put on a scatter plot, you're going to plot some points. This is called bivariate data analysis. This is called two variable data. In bivariate data analysis, you have what we call the independent variable. The independent variable is generally what you change. Uh, sometimes it's considered an uncontrolled change. Maybe you're considering time because things change over time. So that's something you can't control. But basically, independent variables are what you're changing in an experiment or in a relationship. Dependent variables then are the results or the measured impact from the independent variable. When we graph these things, if there is a specific independent and dependent variable, the independent is always the x variable and the dependent is always the y variable. If there is no one thing that is driving the change, then it doesn't matter what you put on your x and what you put on your y. But uh, like height and weight, generally speaking, those things grow proportionally in some way to each other. So you can't say that uh, height causes weight gain or that weight gain causes height. So it generally doesn't matter which one you put on which uh, axes. But if it is something like something changing over time, then you definitely want to put time on your x-axis and the change that you see on your y-axis. Then we have what's called correlation. That is the relationship between the two variables that we're studying up above, the independent and the dependent variables. This is always noted as your R value. Now correlation is generally measured in three different ways. There is direction, strength, and linearity. Now the correlation that we use in this course, the R value that we use, the R value that comes out of your calculator, it's from the Pearson's product moment correlation. There's a few different ways that you can calculate correlation, but this is the one that's used in the IB courses. The thing that you need to know about Pearson's product moment correlation is that it only applies to linear data. I cannot stress this enough, that it only applies to linear data. So what are the values that Pearson's product moment correlation can go to? It can actually fall between negative one and one. And of course here in the middle, we've got zero. On the right side here, the positive one, we consider perfect positive. And over here at negative one, that is perfect negative. That means that all of the data values are lined up exactly on a line or they're lined up exactly on a line positive or negative, um, perfectly. Like every single point is on the line. Uh, if we have a correlation value of zero, we say that there is no correlation. So what this means is that in between these two things, here we've got 0 0.5, here we've got negative 0 0.5. So why do we need all these values? Because these things are going to tell us about our direction and our strength there is a continuum of values that go along here, both on the positive and the negative side. So if we're talking about direction, we're going to talk about positive or negative values. And that positive or negative is going to depend if you are on the negative side or if you are on the positive side, right? Here's our negative side. Here's our positive side. And then the strength is going to be what these numeric values tell us. If we are looking here, this is no correlation. There's nothing here. There's no relationship here. When we're kind of in this range here, we consider this strength to be weak. And it's the same with over here. 
generally speaking, if we're looking between zero and 0 0.5, we consider, we consider this space to be weak. And then as we move out, we get stronger. So here's going to be strong over this way. We could have a strong negative as well. It's not all 0 0.5 to positive one and 0 0.5 to negative one are strong. We kind of, we kind of break it into another half, let's say, or a quarter. We generally say it's strong out here on the ends. And then in this middle space here, this might be what we call moderate. And you could have moderate positive, you can have moderate negative. It's getting kind of squished in there. So our, our strength could be strong, weak, uh, moderate, no correlation, there's no relationship. That's what we would measure with strength. Our direction is gonna be positive or negative. And our linearity, that's just gonna be uh, is it, yes, it's linear. No, it's not linear. And that's really all you can do is just look at the data to see if it's linear or not. So here's an example of some data. We've got some, some points plotted out here and we've got this thing called a trend line. Now our trend line, now the trend line also called the least squares regression line, or sometimes you'll see it written as LSRL, least squares regression line, pretty straightforward. The trend line is basically an equation or a line that's we use to try to best describe the data. So we can see that this line is positive, it's got a positive slope, so we would even say the correlation is positive because it's going uh, up and to the right. Um, we don't necessarily know how strong this correlation is because we don't have the R value there, but we can see that the data is kind of going like this. So we're gonna use that trend line to try to help describe the data in some way along with the correlation. And one thing to know about your trend line is that it always passes through X bar, Y bar. X bar, Y bar is the average of all the X values. Y bar is the average of all the Y values. And that trend line will always pass through that point. And it looks like this one is probably right about there. I didn't actually calculate the X bar, Y bar for this data set, but I'm gonna put it there to just kind of roughly say what it is to just kind of roughly show you where it is. Now the line may not go through other points, but what's happening is it's gonna pivot on that X bar, Y bar to try to simultaneously minimize all what we call the residuals between the observed values and the predicted values. So that is these values here, these distances, these are all of the observed and the differences between the observed and predicted. So this is observed data. Every single black point is observed. These are all predicted values. So this difference right here, we call that a residual. Now residuals are not in our curriculum. I don't know why, I think it should be, but if you are doing an IA containing statistics, you almost certainly should be including residuals. And I'll have a video right here that discusses residuals in a little bit more depth not the depth that you would have in a, in a college level course, but in a depth that you might need for a high school course. So this least squares regression line, what it does is it minimizes each one of these things simultaneously. So what we would normally consider maybe a line that goes straight across here, as we start pivoting that line up to find that, that perfect spot, we are, we are minimizing all of those residuals, all of the squares of the residuals least squares regression line. So we're, we're trying to find all of them simultaneously being the smallest amount. Now we could say maybe we've got a line and we want to tilt it down just a little bit. That might minimize some of these values here, but it's going to increase the values here. It's going to increase the values down here. So what it's doing and that is the sum of all those things is going to be greater than if we kept it back up this way. So that's what the least squares regression line does. Is it, is it, is it, simultaneously looks at all the residuals and makes sure that at the same time, the square of each one of those is at the lowest possible value when you look at all of them across the board. Now there are two more things that I wanna talk about in this video. Um, the first one I probably should have said when we were back talking about correlation, just because you've got something that is strongly correlated, either positive or negative, it doesn't mean that one thing causes the other. An example that a lot of math teachers like to give, myself included, is that ice cream sales and crime rates go up at the same time. They are very highly correlated. The more that ice cream sales go up, the more that crime rates go up. I've also seen this with drownings as well instead of crime rates, but I've, I've talked about both of these things. 
And the reason that they go up is because ice cream sales tend to go up when it's hot outside. When it's hot outside, it's typically the summertime. The summertime, there's typically people taking vacations which and out of school, and uh, it gives more opportunities for there to be petty crime, pickpockets, those kind of things. So the ice cream sales are going up, the crime rate's going up. It has nothing to do with each other. What it's, what it's due to is this thing called summer. <laughs> it's the time of the year. So that's called a confounding variable. Um, so just because it's got a strongly correlated value does not mean that one thing is causing the other. Again, same with drownings. High ice cream does not cause drownings to happen. It's summertime. The other thing I want to talk about is prediction versus extrapolation. Predictions is when you are using a trend line within the domain of your data set. So everything that is inside here, everything that is inside here is within the domain of our data set. Now, if you were to go outside your data set, now you're getting into what's called extrapolation. And the reason that it's extrapolation is that you're trying to extrapolate data out past what we actually observed to make a guess about what could happen in the future. I tend to consider prediction, air quotes, accurate, and extrapolations, air quotes, inaccurate. So it's accurate because it's within that domain and the, it's inaccurate because it's outside the domain. And the reason that it's inaccurate for outside the domain is, let's say that we are measuring children's height and age. So age is down here, height is up here. If we're measuring that in months, we would see that there's going to be a steady increase in their heights. But what happens is once you, if you measured my age in months and what my height would be on this same trend line, maybe we're looking between uh, zero and however many months are in 16 years. You could see a steady growth like this. I'm almost 50. So if I'm looking at that, that's gonna be way out here. My height isn't gonna be three meters tall. It's gonna be way down. And hey, look who's here. This is Cookie. Hi, Cookie. Cookie's a new puppy I just got. Isn't she adorable? Ah, my kids named her Cookie. So anyway, uh, my height is going to be way taller and I'm not gonna be that tall. So I'm extrapolating out these ideas with outside of my data set. So it's not gonna be accurate. It's gonna be completely wrong. So you wanna be careful about uh, extrapolation and prediction. So that's all we've got for our bivariate data analysis. If you love Cookie as much as I do, look at, look at that. Give me a thumbs up, like the video, share it with a friend, tell them how awesome Cookie is, and I'll see you in the next video.